What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Trav Torch Show, episode number two. If you haven't watched episode number one, go ahead and uh, check that out. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you like, hit that subscribe button. If you're watching on or listening on something else, make sure you follow, like, whatever you can do on that. Uh, today's episode, we have a very special guest, one of my favorite producers, Wicked Keys. What's up, brother? What's good, bro? How's everything? Everything is good, man. How you making out? I'm good, man. I'm good. Thank God. Yeah, Wicked, Wicked Keys is uh, one of my favorite producers, one of my go-to, my go-to producer. Uh, produced seven out of the ten songs off Bachelor Life 2, as well as uh, off the first Bachelor Life, the title track, Bachelor Life, as well, Life. <laughs> that's it, as, well as uh, Sex Tape 2. Glad to have you in the building. Got some uh, some insightful questions to ask you. You know, hopefully, uh, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, uh, the li- listeners can learn a little something. So, sure. let's, let's for get. Having me, bro. Oh yeah, man. Pleasure is all mine. So, without wasting without wasting any time, let's get right into it. So, how did you get into uh, music production? Um, honestly, so as a kid, I was raised in church. So ever since I was like young, I always love, I always loved it. I always love either singing, music, beats, percussions. And as I actually grew older, I started seeing other people doing it. And I was like, you know what? I, as a kid, I always loved to actually make it. So I was like, now it's time for me to start making my own beats. So around like 15, 16 is when I really got into it. Oh, dope. So you've been, you've been at it for a minute. Are you like, uh, like I don't want to say classically trained, but like did you take piano lessons or anything like that? Bro, I, I didn't, but I definitely am going to start within some time because I do want to sharpen up all of my actual skills. Like uh, on the keys, I want to be a Beethoven. I want to be killing it. Yeah, yeah, that's something because you know I always that's the one thing that kept me from stepping in the realm of, pro, of being a producer is because I I had the slightest idea on how to play the keyboard, so I'm always asking you, what's what am I always asking you? Oh, what key is this in? <laughs> what key is it in? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I mean, how do you so how do you go about like because you're not like actually trained to play the keyboard? How do you like maneuver around that when you're making the beats? So a lot of times like. I I have like I feel like I have the ear where I could catch a note. It might take me a second, two seconds, but still I could catch the note eventually. So I hear like you. so like most of a lot of times I, I would start to like hmm hmm then after that I would try to find the key of that and I would start from there. Dope. I totally get that. I do the same thing when it comes to singing because I definitely don't know the keys. I definitely Where? don't know <laughs> what key I'm singing in half the time. It's just all about, you know, um, how it how it feels, how it, you know, right. how it feels. It um, by ear. Yeah. So who, who are some of your favorite producers that, that inspired you or, or some currently? Um, I'm going to start from back then. Back then, I was very into the whole uh, deep Hip hop boom bat, so it was from like Alchemist to like Scott Storch, uh, Dr. Dre, uh, Timberland. Cool. I love them all, man. But like, out of like who's out now, I'm not gonna lie, I really do not really keep up with what's out now. I, honestly, like, most of the time, I, I'm always at the crib. I'm bumping my own stuff. Like I don't want to start to compare with what's out with what I'm doing, because then I don't want to get kind of lost with what they're doing. Yeah, I, I, you know, I feel you on that because I kind of that's part of the reason that I felt like I gravitated towards your sound is because you have like a unique, like vintage type of sound where it's not like you're not trying to follow the trends. You're just doing doing what's hot. Right. Right. Thank you, bro. Yeah, that's that's what I always try to do because I don't honestly want to sound with what's hot now because still, with what's hot now, it will not be hot in a year or two. So I'm constantly trying to have my own sound with 
with a little bit of a mix with what's in now. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a lot of for the moment music out there. Right. Definitely. So what's what's like what's your setup like? What type of equipment do you use for the uh, aspiring uh, producers out there? Um, I have uh, Fruity Loops. That's what I use. Then I have a, a Kai MPK 61 and some regular Yamaha monitors. So you to me. Like to me, it's not it's not what you have is how. It's how you can use with what what you have. Right. So so you you basically do most of your um, creation like on the computer. You don't have that much like outboard type equipment. No, I no, I don't use I don't use the hardware nowadays. I used to back in the days. Everything was hardware. I had a bunch of a bunch of bunch of keyboards, but like. To me, it was just like it's a waste of space. Right. Nowadays, you could have you could have the same thing all in one rack. Right, right. You and you also had a flexibility to to go mobile doing that. You can go right, to exactly. somebody else's spot and just make a beat. Yeah, bro. Yo, yesterday, bro. Yesterday, I was I was actually at the park, and I was like, yo, two years ago. If I could never, or say, no, I'm not. Say like five years ago, 10 years ago, you could never make a beat at the park. Word. I was making the beat at the park. I was like, wow, this is, this is crazy. <laughs> that's, that's dope. I've been, and, and I, you know, it's kind of that, you ever heard of, uh, it's a mastering engineer, Glenn Schick. He made his whole mastering um, rig mobile. So like he, he, he basically just travels all around the world and he has everything in his laptop, all his plugins and stuff. He just masters <laughs> in like some like fifteen thousand dollar headphones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what it is nowadays, man. Yeah, everything is everything is all on the laptop. Yep. So, like, what's what's some advice you have on or for uh, some up and coming producers on how they can make money off beats, how they can monetize beats? Because it seems like. It seems like the the market is kind of oversaturated. So, what are, what are some things they could do to stand out, and what are some things they could do to make money? Um, one of the biggest things I say is that you have to be yourself. That is one. You have to be yourself, and two, you always have to be showing your face. Everything nowadays is Instagram, Facebook. Twitter, you should be showing your face. You should be doing as much as you can to be showing your face. Everything now is about it's it's about the sound, yeah, but it's about you and your brand and what your brand can actually bring out. Right. Right. And I know you use the uh, we use uh, Beat Stars. Yeah, uh, Beat uh, Stars. To, to monetize your uh, your content? Yeah, with B-Stars, uh, I've been on that for like two years. It's it's only uh, $20 a month, so it's really not much at all. So, and you feel like it's, sell it. You feel like it's worth it? It's, I feel like it is, because you can have everything there, and then after that, you could just send them to your site. I think I'd be like, all right, when I get home, I'm going to have to send you this and that. No, everything is on the site. You need, you need this type of beat. It's on there. Go on the site. Everything is there. Cool. So you find like it's, it's a good way to, 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 for people to find you so that they can be directed somewhere else where they can spend some money. Right. So, for sure. So, um. So what artists are there that you would like, to, if you could work with any artists or to some of the artists that you would like to work with, who do you feel like you'd be able to, to do some dope production for? Honestly, I have a long list of a lot of artists of Top five. all types. Top five. But I'll say one would be a Chris Brown for sure. I always, always loved the way he was. And I always loved his sound. And he and him, he's he's always 
up to par. He's always updated. Sometimes he's so advanced that he is doing things that won't be popping for like another two years, three years. True. But Chris Brown, uh, another one would be um, Drake. Ooh. Um, now nah, the Spanish market would be bad. Would be Bad Bunny. Okay. Anuel. And definitely, um, see, there's so many. And right now I can't think. <laughs> yeah, but I, I definitely, like, when you name those artists, I can see it because, like, your, your style is so diverse. It's like, it's, you could throw anything your way and, right. you'll, and you'll, like, you'll do more than good a job at it. So I definitely right. see, right. like, yeah. why you would be attracted to, like, such a... Um, a wide uh, array of artists. But one question I never asked you, like, so people are like, oh, yo, how'd you find Wicked Keys? How'd you feel like, I don't, I don't even remember. I just, I just, like, how'd you find me? <laughs> Bro, so this is what I used to do. For like a good, like two, three months, every day, I was like, look, every day I'm gonna, I'm gonna wake up at six and as soon as I get up, I'm going on the phone and I'm going to search hashtags. Either it's R&B singers, singers, rappers. I'm going to search through that. I'm going to go. I'm going to start to search singers. I'm going to go listen to their song. And if I feel it's something good that I could do for them, then I'm going to hit them up. So that's what I did with you. Yeah, because I, I remember, um, I think you sent me a message and it was like, yo, I'm feeling your, uh, your sex tape joint. Right. Um, yep. it, check out check out some of my stuff. And to me, the only reason why I checked it out was because the message was so personal. It was like, oh, so this person actually took the time to listen to right. some of my music and, right. um, you know, clearly they, they they feel like they have material that could you know, fit with my style. And right. then when I, when I listened to some of your beats, the first beat I heard was the beat I ended up using for Bachelor Life. Bachelor Life. <laughs> so I thought that was dope. Thought that was yeah. dope. And then we reconnected. Thank re you, man. Yeah, then we reconnected on um, uh, uh, Bachelor Life too. Sex tape. Yeah, sex, yeah, sex tape too. Tape. Sex, sex tape, tape too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A lot a lot of people don't know, like like you and I never met in person, but you know, nope. we just, we developed a the really- The chemistry was there. Yeah, really good, like digital working relationship, if you will. Right. Yeah. Um. So. Sure. So let let the um let's let the listeners know like what's our process like how do how do you and I create because like I said we did seven out of the ten songs together on Bachelor Life too so what's our process like how do we how do we create our process is that you're like yo wicked I got a joint <laughs> for you <laughs> and I'm like yo let's send it over. And then we get to work. Yeah, yeah. He sent me to acapella a lot of times, and then after that, I go to work. Yeah, yeah. A lot of a lot of people don't know. This is a little known secret. A lot of people don't know. A lot of the stuff that that I've done on Bachelor Life and Bachelor Life Two was very old material that I wrote, like either when I was in high school or college, and I recorded it, right. and I uh, just didn't have the the mechanism or the means to release it property properly. So I decided to go back and update it and, <laughs> and refresh it. And, uh -huh. you know, and uh, the wiki keys has been the perfect like person to help bring the older concepts and records up to date. Yeah, thank um, you, bro. Thank yeah. you, man. So Real. like, so what, what, what's the favorite song? Uh, what's your favorite song of mine that you got to, to do and why? I'm gonna say honestly, it's between Makeover and okay. and Wake Up. Yeah, yeah, hey, Wake Up is dope. Makeover, what I really love about it, it's definitely the live guitar. Like that just brings that part out so much. And as soon as I was doing that, I was like, "Yo, I have to have this guy just do this guitar on it," because I, because I already knew for sure it's gonna bring. It's gonna bring the sexiness out of that part, right? So that's right. definitely, definitely one of my favorites, and it's definitely wake up also. 
Yeah, yeah. That wake up definitely got some some pretty good feedback. Yeah, definitely, for sure. definitely. For sure. We might be doing a video for that. We might be. We'll That's see. Good luck. Yeah, yeah. That's great luck right there. Yeah. Well, so how can uh, how can people follow you? You guys can follow me at Wicked Keys W I I C K E D K E Y Z Z on Instagram, Twitter, on Facebook. It's the same thing. Wicked Keys. Dope, dope, and yeah, highly, highly recommend it. Uh, if you're looking for if you're looking for high quality beats, definitely uh, hit up Wicked Keys. Yes. So, Thank uh, you, bro. No doubt, man. Thanks for uh, also. Also, right now I have a lot of sales going on too. So please go on the website www.wickedkeys.com. Yeah, definitely. Lot of sales. Definitely, definitely. Great prices, definitely. All right, Thank man. You, bro. So Thank this you is for uh, having me, man. Yeah, episode two of the Trav Torch Show, and we'll see you next okay. time. All right, peace. Peace.